thank you for that heads up on the uh, fire, fire prevention week. And uh, we certainly, uh, that's one of our big three up here that we uh, we trained, uh, trained for and hope never to get. But uh, fire uh, rapid decompression and then a toxic atmosphere with ammonia. And so uh, we, uh, we practice uh, quite often our emergency response up here and uh, we try to be as safe as possible and, uh, and uh, uh, fortunately we haven't had any, uh, any incidents uh, since my spacewalk and I got an ammonia shower but uh, we were able to take all that off. Over. Like that's entire brownie is for Matt. That's a Matt attack brownie, right? <laughs> this is Matt's brownie. So Matt's, Matt's brownie. <laughs> we'll, we'll split the other one. And that's for our neighbors. <laughs> And that's from Matt after his baseball game. Probably. Where are you going to put on the top? I'm going to um, make some, get some sprinkles and have it say Happy October because it's not Halloween yet. Happy October. Happy October. That's very PC of you, Kels. <laughs> <laughs> Always looking to be politically correct. The sprinkles didn't work in the Happy, Halloween, or Happy October, so I'm just putting them on. I think I can read Happy Halloween. It's in uh, Braille. It's in Braille. So this is Plan B. Plan B. Looks good. Thanks. I don't think Matt will mind. All right, guys, well, there's Colonel Doug Wheelock, commander of Expedition 25, and today is October 3rd, 2010. Now, I've had a lot of questions about the ISSFanClub.com website, in particular, the tracking module. And if you go to ISSFanClub.com, sign in and make an account. Here you can see I'm signed in as KF7ETX. And you go to the top menu bar on the very left hand side, you'll see this tracking button. And when you click on that, you're going to go to the tracking module. Now, this is the tracking module. And here you can see the Google push pin for my location in the Pacific Northwest, Portland, Oregon. And you can see the International Space Station with a little purple ring around it. And that basically is its radio footprint. At the bottom of the map, you're going to see this chart, which will give you the next 10 passes for your location. Now, it's important to recognize that this is done in UTC, and um, that will give you the date, the time for the beginning of the pass, and the time at the end of the pass. It's a little confusing because sometimes you'll look at this and think that they're a day ahead of you, and in fact they are because of UTC. Let's take a look at my station clock. Here you can see I'm set for uh, Portland, Oregon, and the local time is coming up on 1025. The pass we're going to try and catch is the 1740 pass, so we've got a few minutes. So 1026 local, but 1726 UTC. So you can see for my location, Portland, Oregon, that they are plus 7 for Pacific Daylight Savings Time. So if we look here, the pass that I'm interested in, it's October 3rd, 2010. The pass starts at 1740 and ends at 1750. If you take a look at the tracking module map and click on go live down below and then click on the map for the pass of interest, you'll see this map pop up. Now you'll see your uh, location marked with the Google push pin and you'll see the track of the International Space Station as it approaches and leaves your area. And again, you'll notice those purple concentric rings, which gives you the footprint, the radio footprint of the space station as it makes its pass. And it's interesting to note that here you can see at a certain portion of the pass that they have um, coverage for the uh, west coast all the way out to almost the east coast. And that's why it's not unusual to hear Colonel Wheelock calling back call signs for um, Oregon, Nevada, Montana, Wyoming, Arizona, Utah, California for my particular area. Now if we scroll down and take a look at the chart underneath this particular map, 
that has all the details for this particular pass. And you'll see that, again, this is in UTC, so the date and time. And then the next bit of critical information that you get from this is the azimuth. For those of you that are familiar with a compass, you'll recognize what that is. But let's take a quick look. And you'll notice that around the compass are uh, degrees. And this particular pass is going to start at 299 degrees. It's going to pass through 360, which is north, and it will exit at about 110 degrees, which is just south of east. So this particular pass on this compass is going to start at 299, which is roughly right there. It's going to swing through north, and it will exit just south of east, right about here. Now this is the compass that I carry in my go bag and I basically set it up and I take a look at where the space station will enter and where it will exit and then somewhere in that arc will be a maximum elevation above horizon and you can make note of that right here. It will be 58 degrees above horizon at about 40 uh, degrees azimuth. Okay, this is the tracking sheet that I print out and I will print that out now. We're getting ready for the 1740 pass. Okay, well, welcome back. Um, it is 1739 UTC, coming up on 1740. And as you saw in the beginning of this video, there will be an ISS pass over the Pacific Northwest starting at 1740. And this is the tracking sheet that I printed from the issfanclub.com website. And let's see if we can get the International Space Station, usually Colonel Doug Wheelock operating NA-1SS on board the International Space Station. Kilo Fox 7, Echo Tango X-Ray, Portland, Oregon. Wondering if you could tell us about the ra uh, Russian radio experiments a few days ago. Yes, it's great to talk to you, David. Uh, again, uh, Kilo Fox 7, Echo Tango X-Ray. Uh, yeah, we had uh, uh, Fyodor Yurchikin, our uh, cosmonaut on board, uh, uh, is actually, was actually doing some experimentation uh, with the... Um, uh, with the Russian Space Agency transmission, uh, the transmission of data and uh, and photographs uh, using the um, our transmitter, and uh, and uh, we accidentally, well, we didn't accidentally, we just didn't. Uh, he had the cable hooked up uh, to the ham radio uh, set, and so the other night when I missed you folks, uh, it's because we had this uh, piece of hardware uh, still plugged into the transmitter, so uh, I could hear you guys, but I couldn't transmit it, so it took me. Uh, it took me about a quarter of an orbit to figure out what had happened. So, sorry about that the other evening. Over. Well, bless your heart taking all these contacts. I'm always impressed with you reading off the huge number of uh, QSOs. And uh, I'll let you go, 73s. And uh, thank you so much for sharing that information. 1744, about one third of the way into the pass. So I dropped it down because of the Doppler effect to 145. Yeah, So remember the Doppler effect. So as they're coming, they're. Basically, you have to keep dropping the frequency down because of the speed and the Doppler effect. Egan, it's great to talk to you again. Uh, 73 to you. I hope you guys are having a great weekend down there. Here. 
I always try and catch these calls. Uh, beautiful signal from northwest Oklahoma. We're up over uh, Montana area right now. Uh, kilo, that was a Kilo Bravo Zero. Hotel, hotel. We got you loud and clear aboard the space station. Over. I try and post those call signs up to help those operators out. Kilo Delta 7, Charlie Delta Charlie, we've got you loud and clear aboard the space station. Number Bravo 1, Sierra Sierra. We're entering the tail end of the pass right now. It's uh, 1747 UTC, and we might have lost them. Kilo Echo 5, no. Alpha Golf Hotel. Eddie, we got you loud and clear. We're directly over Salt Lake City right now. Uh, great, Salt, the Gulf, uh, great Salt Lake right below us now. Houston, Texas. I used to live very close. Used to live very close to the Johnson Space Center. I uh, went to high school and graduated from Clear Lake High School. And we're going to lose them here. We've got one minute left on this pass, at least from what I can see. I think we might lose them here. They got a big footprint. So I can hear them, but again, now the reception is getting a little scratchy. And if you look at the issfanclub.com website, the radio footprint for the ISS basically goes from the Pacific Northwest all the way down through the center of the panhandle of Florida and up um, probably about halfway up the uh, east coast. And uh, we've just lost them. So we might hang around for the next pass, but um, that was very interesting as usual. And thanks for stopping back by. This is David in Portland, Oregon, KF7ETX, USNER doc. Out. Okay, guys, well, there's one more pass that I can listen in on before I head off to work today. Um, a little groggy. I worked uh, night shift last night, so woke up in time to get set up for this pass. The next one for me is 1915, and I'll certainly uh, try and get that. It's going to be a low-angle pass, but I have definitely contacted the space station at a low-angle pass like this before, and to me, it's well worth it. So anyway, that one, I'm going to reposition everything to the front of the house because they're going to be passing directly in front of the house. We've got a great shot at the horizon, actually, which is down below us. So I'm kind of at an advantage with that. Anyway, we'll see you again about 19, 1915. Well, guys, this is the 1915 UTC pass over the Pacific Northwest. This is the last good pass of the day for the uh, Northwest and actually the last pass for me because I'm going to be heading off to work here pretty quick but I'll never never uh, pass up a good chance to get on the air and hopefully make a QSO with the International Space Station. Let's hope we get them. Kilo Fox 7, Echo Tango X-Ray Portland not going to happen. Oh well. It's always fun anyway. And it's a great exercise just setting up my rig and uh, making sure I have all the adjustments. Hopefully some more adventures for you. We're definitely going to take this equipment out on the road and also out hiking and see how that works. So stay tuned. This is David, KF7ETX in Portland, Oregon, USNER doc. Out.